up? This is Chris Raper from Autopsy and Siege Power and a bunch of other stuff. You're listening to Jet on uh, Metal Messiah Radio. That's good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Metal Magdalene with Jet right here on Metal Messiah Radio. Tonight we have a special guest with us back on the show. We have Chris Reifer, and today is here to talk about his latest band he is in called Siege of Power. Welcome back to the show, Chris. Hey, 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 what's up? So, Chris, we're so used to you behind a drum kit, singing and playing with Autopsy, and here you are now up front doing vocals in Siege of Power. So how did this band all come about? Um, they, you know, it's something I kind of just stepped into at the last minute. Uh, um, you know, not to be a disappointment, but if you want to talk musical history of the band, I'm... I'm uh, probably not the uh, the authority. Uh, you know, I, I can tell you what I what I do know about it. That they formed the band a few years ago, and it was called First Class Elite at that point. Um, they did some recordings, and then I think they more or less split up for a while, mm -hmm. a couple of years. I'm not even sure. Yeah. <laughs> but then they decided to. Uh, uh, keep it going or reactivate it, whatever the case may be, and make a record. And they found themselves without a vocalist. I guess they, they had someone who was with them originally when they were around, and he couldn't or wouldn't do it for whatever reason. I don't, I'm not sure what the deal was with that, but they found themselves with music but no vocalist. And uh, I went to see a Six play um, over here in Oakland, um, a while back, and we were hanging around, you know, having some beers, just talking or whatever. And Paul, the guitar player, was like, hey, we got this this uh, album, and our singer can't do it. How would you feel about doing it? And uh, without thinking about it, I just said, sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's hard to say no to your buddies. <laughs> so um, that was pretty much it. And then they informed me that they... Uh, we're going to have 13 songs and uh, no vocalists and no lyrics. So, <laughs> like, okay, we need you to write the, the lyrics, too. It's like, okay, 13 songs, huh? All right. <laughs> let's, let's do it. And then it turned in, then they got excited and recorded seven more songs. Then all of a sudden it was 20 songs that I had to write lyrics for. And this was at a time when I had a bunch of other things going on at the same time, which is like usual. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was kind of stressful, you know, taking that on. I was almost questioning whether I had the time for it, but uh, um, I made the time. <laughs> you know, I wasn't going to let those guys down, that's for sure. That was the last thing on my mind, was, so, you know. Tell, tell, every, tell everybody who else was in the band, Chris. Oh, yeah, okay, I can do that. Um, there's uh, uh, Bob Bacchus, who was um, the former drummer for S-Fix, and, uh, and then you got Paul um, from S-Fix, um, the guitar player who's on it, and then uh, Tio is on bass, and he's in uh, Hail of Bullets. And, I mean, they've all been pretty, pretty prominent mm -hmm. in the Dutch metal scene, all those guys. Um, and yeah, so that's that's everybody. So, so, and me. so what's it like for you to be like singing only? I mean, do you miss like the security of your drum kit? Um, I mean, it was it was the same in terms of being in the studio because right. you know, with like autopsy or whatever, when I do when I record the vocals, I do them separately. So it's it's the same as always, just me standing in front of a microphone with headphones on. So there's really no different, you know. I mean. The only time it becomes different is, like, live, you know, with autopsy. Then I have to do both at the same time. But in the studio, it's all separate. So it, it, it was the same as always, you know, just throw some beers down and start yelling and stuff. <laughs> now, are you guys going to play live? I mean, do you have that in your mind that you want to go out and do some shows? Um, I have no idea. I mean, the way the the project was presented to me is it was going to be a one a one album thing mm -hmm. no shows just just do the album and and uh make it killer and something that later we'll look back on and be glad we did it so 
I mean, so far that's that's still the case, but you know, sometimes things happen and you don't expect them, so you never know. But as far as actively seeking out shows, no, we're not doing that. Well, I would definitely go because I just would like to see what you do with yourself up there when you're just. I singing. would be curious <laughs> to find out too because I've never done that before. So <laughs> I have no idea what would happen. So, so you guys have that new album coming out September seventh off Metal Blade Records called Warning Blast. So, oh, you got a release date? I didn't even know about yeah, that. Cool. Yes, it'll be September seventh off of Metal Blade Records. Okay, so mark that down. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Now, now I'm in the know. <laughs> That's pretty soon too, Chris. So. Yeah, I know. I'm ready for my copies. <laughs> so now I also read in one of the things that Metal Blade sent over that it. It only took like a couple of hours to write all the songs for this album. What the hell? What? Well, those, I mean, the, the music, I think they, they were pretty uh, spontaneous in their approach. Uh, my understanding is that they had studio time booked and they kind of just kind of like put the songs together and hammered them out on the spot. You know, I think. I wasn't there for it, you know, mm -hmm. that was before I even entered the picture, so you'd have to ask them for more details, but my understanding is was it went something like this, they, you know, kind of work on a song concept, put the song together, jam it a couple times, then record it onto next song, something like that anyways. Um, so they, it, was, it was pretty spontaneous. Um, as far as my end goes, I it was it was a pretty sizable undertaking having to come up with with twenty songs. <laughs> so, I, I for a few months before recording, I had just kind of like scribblings on paper, like loose ideas and concepts, maybe maybe a line or two or whatever, but nothing nothing cohesive at all. Just a bunch of scribbling stuff. Um, I had this idea of being like well prepared way ahead of time and all this and like oh I'm gonna go in totally knowing what to do and it definitely didn't turn out like that. I I got myself so so psyched up about it, I kind of I don't know. What what I ended up doing is I waited a week before going in to actually write everything. <laughs> which I don't know if that was the best way to do it, but it was it was the only way I could. I I started overthinking things and Nothing was really working out, and so then, you know, fortunately I can work well under pressure. So a week before the studio day came up, I just said, all right, I'm going to do them, and I'm going to do them now. And so I think over the course of like two weekends, I, I uh, put it all together and went in the studio and definitely felt super unprepared for the first song or two in the studio, like almost questioning whether I was going to be able to pull it off, like, oh, shit, I... I don't, I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> which I'm not used to that feeling. I always come in having done all of my homework and totally like knowing every little thing. In this case, it was definitely not like that. But I, uh, after the first song, I got that one down. Then it started to flow. And then I, I felt like the pressure subside. And, and then it then it became fun. It's like, oh, okay, cool. Now I you know, just had to kind of loosen up and, and uh <laughs> get into the get into the vibe and all that and it really ended up working out great so, so chris in that week that you had to hurry up and do those 20 songs where the hell were you getting your ideas from were you like oh my god something fall out of the sky what's going on on tv what's, i mean how the hell did you get those ideas um it was pretty easy just because of the nature i mean if it, if it was like autopsy or something where i had to come up with like 20 little you know horror stories or whatever it would have been impossible you know but uh for this the lyrical content has to fit the music you know the music's kind of like kind of crossover-ish or whatever you know kind of metal metal hardcore hybrid or whatever and so with that in mind it was it was easy to come up with with subject matter because you know music like that you want you know want to uh the lyrics have to fit the way it sounds and in this case it's aggressive you know, kind of angry, lyrical uh, subject matter. And it's these days in particular, it's really easy to come up with stuff like that. So I just kind of jotted down a whole bunch of ideas and concepts. And uh, it, it was that part was actually pretty, pretty easy. 
I mean, it sounds like most of the hard work was done before you even had to do anything. All you had to do was, like, write the lyrics in at that point, so you everything was already written? Yeah, the music was. The music was all ready for me to, to do my thing over. So, I mean, it was, it was easy and difficult at the same time, you know, because uh, normally if I'm, I'm, I play on a record, I'm there for all of it. Like, I'm really, you know, knee-deep in the whole the writing process and all that, and I, you know kind of came into this one as an outsider, you know, like, you know, was was brought into it kind of after the fact to some extent. So I kind of had to get my head wrapped around the whole little world they created. Um, so it was kind of challenging in that way, but I mean, it's good for me too, you know, so it was a good experience and, you know, I, I learned that I can pull it together at the last minute <laughs> and uh, make it work and Hopefully, had it not sound like it was put together at the last minute. And was it weird for you to, I mean, like you said, usually you're part of, like, this whole process, but maybe it was better that you weren't part of the whole process, because maybe you would have been like, well, I wouldn't have played the drums that way, and I might have wanted <laughs> Oh, no, I, I can't think about it like that. I mean, <laughs> but they, you know, this is what they wanted it to sound like, and I think they achieved that. Yeah. Uh, so... You know, my my takeaway from it is I'm I'm glad, totally stoked. They wanted me to do it, and I'm you know glad I was able to you know find the time to do it. And and uh, yeah, I mean it was it was a, it was a cool thing. I'm, I'm I'm glad it happened. And now, twenty tracks. Okay, two of those tracks are bonus tracks. Um, you released a single, Mushroom Cloud. I mean, have you heard? Um, much reaction back from the single, you know, or anything like that? Seen any reviews or any of that kind of thing? Uh, not a whole lot yet. I've, I've seen, like, one album review that was good. <clears throat> I'm sure it'll be, like, like the usual, you know, I mean, everyone's got their opinions and stuff. I'm sure there'll be, you know, people that love it and people that don't love it, you know, or whatever. I can't worry about that, yeah. especially now with the internet and everyone's got a, a comment and opinion and they all feel like they need to express them on the internet and stuff. And I just can't worry about stuff like that. You know, I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm glad we did it. And, and, uh, that's, that's all I need to worry about. I mean, did you guys all go about together picking which song to release as a single or does the label do it? Or how did you guys come about with that song as the single? Um, we, we discussed it together through, like, group emails and stuff. Um, so, yeah, we, we got to we got to pick. And do you know anything about the cover art and the artist, Chris? Um, I've seen the cover art. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I like it a lot. I mean, it's, it's, it's really it's cool. Fitting. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think it's great. Um, uh, the, the, the artist... Um, the, the, those guys had him already, uh, picked out. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I, I looked at some of his stuff on, on, online and was like, yeah, yeah, it would be a good fit. And, and, uh, we got to steer it in the right direction because there was a bunch of other versions of it that were completely different that just definitely didn't work. So I, I don't know how many of them there were. There was definitely a, a handful of other concepts and, uh, we finally arrived at this one and that this one did the trick. And now, do you, how is it going to be released? I mean, is there pre-orders going on? Can people pick it up over at Metal Blade site? Um, I mean, since it's on Metal Blade, it'll be, it should be easy to, to find, you know, whether you get your stuff online or go to record stores or whatever. Um, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure it'll be easily accessible. And I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think if people go over to the actual Siege of Power Facebook page, I think there might be links up there where people could go pre-order. I think they probably, Metal Blade, as always, has always all kinds of like little bundles and stuff uh, for people to pick up. I mean, what else do you have going on, Chris? I mean, we know you did this project here. Um, got any other little projects we ought to know about? Oh, there's always something. Um, the autopsy's still going. We're still still doing that. Um, and then I've got violation wound. We're we're uh, on year five of that. And wow. 
going strong still. Um, and then I've got that uh, painted doll band, which is completely different from all the other stuff. Um, and that's going still too. So yeah, there's there's a lot. What are you doing? <laughs> I mean, I barely skinned over painted doll. I mean, what are you like vocals and bass? What the heck are you doing on that? No, I no, I the, <laughs> I'm, I don't sing on it. That's why the vocals are good. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would that would be a, a, a deal breaker if I was the vocalist on it. Um, no, that's I played on the album. I I played drums. And then um, I did some guitar and bass as well. And then my buddy Dave, who's the, the other half of the band, he he did all the vocals and he did uh, also, um, uh, which we call it, some guitar and bass and uh, a little bit of uh, keyboard too. So we, between the two of us, we got all the basses covered. And what kind of music is that band, Chris? Um, it's it's I'd say like rock with a psychedelic edge to it. Definitely not metal or punk or anything like that. Just straight ahead, you know, pretty much psychedelic rock. And Chris, with all your gear and stuff, have you bought anything new lately? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I'm not a gearhead. I don't talk about guitars or drums or brands or I don't. I don't buy gear. I don't. <laughs> it's just something that I need to to use to you know create your music make, yeah but i mean if, if someone starts talking about like guitar pickups or you know drum heads i'm probably going to leave the room because i just don't <laughs> care you know i mean there's people that can talk about tuning picks for three hours and that ain't me you know so, so I, I have i bought anything lately no i'll, I'll only buy things if they break <laughs> so so how you old know? is your how old is your drum kit chris um i I think I've had it for like 18 years, oh. and I, I, you know, that particular kid, I, I only replace things when they break. You know, if I could break a drum head, I'll replace it. I don't, I don't ever replace them when they get old. I just wait, wait till they till break. They break. <laughs> you know, it's what, terrible, but uh, what, how I roll. What kind of a set is it? What kind of a kid is it? Do they still make them anymore, Chris? Um, it's a. Yeah, probably. It's a, a Premier Cabria, which is, it's the, kind of like the low end for Premier, but they don't, Premier doesn't make bad drums. But uh, I was obsessed with getting Premier because Keith Moon played them, like, so I was like, oh, I have to get Premier drums. <laughs> I went, like, everywhere at all the local music stores, and no one had them or would be willing to, to get them for me. You know, they're like, oh, well, here, we got this DW kit on the floor, you can buy that. I'm like, no, I don't want that. <laughs> so I ended up actually finding a, a store that was willing to order them from England. And so I had to wait like six months oh, months for them to show up because they actually had to show up by boat. Oh. And, um, and it was a happy day when they arrived. So that's that was like probably one of the only times where I actually really wanted a piece of gear enough to you know do something like that to get it but ordinarily i just like a guitar is something to play i'm not i'm not a a, a gear nut <laughs> so 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 chris how long have you been in this music business now um business i mean in terms well <laughs> being from the first band you were in you know death whatever the heck it was oh well i mean I've been playing in bands since I was probably like like fourteen, I guess. Mm -hmm. Whatever. I mean, the first, you know, my first attempt at putting a real band together was probably like nineteen eighty three, something like that. And what are your thoughts on this music industry today? I mean, back when you first started out, really, what well, there was very limited um, bands, really. And now look at it. There's so much going on. I know, it's overwhelming, isn't it? It is. Is that your thoughts on it? Overwhelming? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's there's just so... There's, it's impossible to keep up with all of it now, so I don't even try. You know, it's just... Uh, yeah, just, you know, in terms of bands, there's just millions and millions and millions. You know, it's hard to... I think it, it makes it really hard to stand out amongst mm -hmm. all the other bands these days. If you're like a new band up and coming, 
and you got your work cut out for you, you know. I mean, it, you know, back in the older days, it was it was probably difficult as well, but for different reasons. Mm-hmm. There wasn't as many avenues and outlets for underground music, so you had to, like, really do the physical work to get it out there, you know. Um, it's it's kind of, like, too easy now, nowadays. You know, you can form a band and record something at home and have it on the internet all on the same day if you want. You know, it doesn't mean it'll be any good, but but you can do that, you know. So, um, and a lot of people do, so there's just, just so much out there. Um, yeah, it's it's crazy. It's overwhelming. And, and Chris, as far as just, like, music in general, what do you usually listen to? I mean, what is, like, your go-to music? Um, I don't have one particular go-to music it just depends on what what uh what day it is you know i mean I, I, my music tastes are all over the place you know i could be listening to the faces today or i could be listening to the battalion of saints later today or, you know or, or whatever it's just kind of all over the place i don't have like one particular thing i'm into i'm I, i'm my musical tastes are very moody and all over the place. <laughs> I mean, do you have like a a favorite band, whether it be for nostalgic purposes, or you just really, really love them? Not not one in particular. I mean, there's just thousands. <laughs> it just <laughs> depends on what what day of the week it is and what hour of the day it is. You know, and I'll I'll be fixating on something completely different. Um, you know, I've got like all my my old favorites from like you know childhood and teenage years and all that, which I still like. And clear up to attempting to discover new things today. You know, I'm still I'm always on the hunt for something new to listen to. I mean, I, I mean, put it this way, I I ran out of room for new music years and years and years ago in my mm-hmm. house. And I still keep buying it. It's kind of a it's kind of a problem in a way, but I but I love it. You know. So, as with all your projects you have going on, do you have anything coming up for the rest of this year? Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I mean, I'm doing. Uh, I got a couple shows I'm doing. Um, Autopsy's playing in uh, playing uh, Quebec Death Fest in right. October, and uh, Violation Mean. We're playing a show in a couple weeks in Oakland. Um, there's a couple splits coming out still that Violation Moon did. Um, it should be out any minute now. Then, of course, the Siege of Power album, which is coming out next month. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything I'm forgetting about. There's always autopsy reissues on the horizon. Mm-hmm. There's a couple more of those coming out. Um, yeah, yeah. So there's a few things, and then and then working on new material for all the bands. Want to do new albums and stuff, which you know probably get get around to that next year. Um, no, there's always, I've always got, you know, a lot of things happening at the same time. So the Siege of Power, again, coming out September 7th off of Metal Blade Records. And then, oh yeah, and the name of the record is called Warning Blast. Let's get that out there. And people could probably go and pre-order it now off the Metal Blade site. And if you go to the Siege of Power Facebook page, I'm pretty sure they have... Um, links and stuff all over the place. And Chris, thank you for coming on the show and telling us a little bit about the new album and and your part in that and what's going on with you. And uh, have a great rest of the year, and hopefully we'll talk to you again with your next new projects. Sounds good to me, and hey, thanks. I appreciate it. You know, right on for taking time out of your day to talk to me.